Okay, we're good. Welcome, very welcome indeed here this morning to our issue briefing on migration. Sorry we've lost a few of you. Sorry it's starting a little bit late. Um, my colleague here on the panel was in a meeting with the president, so uh, I think it's entirely under understandable. Those of you who haven't um, been familiar with our issue briefing format, they're designed as, as briefing sessions on some of the tougher issues that we face. We encourage blunt speaking. We encourage brisk interactions. So feel free to put your, stick your hand up at any time. We only have half an hour. In fact, we have less. So uh, I think we should get cracking as soon as possible. We try to not waste too much time on statements, but get straight into answers. Mm -hmm. Rose Bell, this is on migration. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subject which is overshadowed, I think, in global media at least, by the, by the, by the scenes we see in, in Europe. But it's also a, a greater issue in terms of numbers across Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's something which has led to xen xenophobic attacks and is, is threatening other efforts at economic integration by, by, by challenging the movement of free freedom movement across borders. Where is it, what is your take on migration? Are we seeing it getting worse? There was a, uh, a, you know, a lot of emphasis on xenophobic attacks last year in particular. In 2016, where does migration stand in Africa? Um, I think when you talk about uh, migration uh, in Africa, we have to look at migration within the continent and uh, migration out of the continent. So those are uh, very key. Uh, you've mentioned uh, Europe right now. Um, it's what is in the news, so it comes to define sort of in the eyes of the people what migration is about, but migration is much bigger than that. And uh, it's easy to look at uh, dramatic images out of the Mediterranean uh, Sea and think that uh, oh, all, all Africans are kind of packing their bags to Europe. It's not the reality. The reality is that most migration takes place within Africa. People are moving. Uh, you must see, uh, uh, we must look at how migration in Africa happened uh, and how colonial boundaries actually stopped migration and affected the migration of the people uh, within the continent and the formation of the current states in Africa. And uh, once in the post-independence period, people, um, uh, countries were moving to build, uh, you know, borders rather than how it used to be that people could be free to move uh, uh, across those borders. And it has taken us a long time to even come to bring the barriers. We are still talking uh, about African Union wanting to introduce a common passport in 2018. And uh, kind of reversed what it was like on this continent because people were free to move um, across borders. So uh, when we look at migration, uh, we have to look at the images, of course, out of the Mediterranean. They're very key to understanding certain issues that are taking place in the continent, but that's not the only story. It's important to look at um, at uh, the different stories within migration. Um, that said, uh, we must realize that uh, what is driving migration a lot is political instability, the kind of desperate migration. Uh, so we have migration where people are seeking opportunities and it's not like they are running away from anything from their homes, but they simply are aware that there are very different opportunities out there and they want to seek them. But there are those desperate migration uh, routes that we are seeing where people are dying. Uh, we have a lot of um, Eritreans uh, crossing borders across Sudan, and uh, that has a connection also with organized crime, where young, uh, you know people have been taken advantage, advantage of uh, by many organized crime groups. So really, it's a very complex, uh, complex uh, idea, um, issue, migration. It's not about uh, Europe images and the Mediterranean. It's much broader than that. And when you see Africa, I come from Uganda. Almost, uh, I think, 5% of our GDP is coming from remittances. So that's what migration is about in another context, that people are able to move and seek more opportunities abroad and be able to feed their families back home. Um, and, and the whole, uh, and it's a big part of our, of our, of our, of our economy. And uh, we have seen countries in Africa moving to put in policies regarding remittances and diaspora, uh, because a lot of people are, go uh, are going abroad. And when we look at routes, of course, European routes is so emphasized because of Europe has built a fortress where they think nobody else should come in. We should, you know, really protect this. Um, but we have a lot of Ugandans going uh, and Africans going to Asia. You just need to be in um, in a plane, whether it's uh, Kenya Airways or uh, Ethiopian Airlines, on the route to China, to Bangkok, to Dubai. You know, there are so many people going to do business and doing a lot of work in the in the in the Middle East and Asia. So the focus cannot just be about Europe and people dying. I think uh, it's it's uh, it's the just a part of the story of migration. Thanks, Rosebel. And in my haste to get started, I, I, I neglected to introduce you. 
my apologies. Rosebel Kagamiri, delighted to be joined by uh, one of our young global leaders here, um, founder and uh, head of Quita Consulting, based in Uganda, also a journalist and, 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 and commentator, I understand as well, over a range of issues. Happy for, to open up the floor to any questions, if there are any at this stage. If we have a microphone here, please. Lady at the front. Hi, thank you. Um, Aaron Baker from Time Magazine. I'm curious, we talk about this idea of an African passport, but I mean, that's not even something we achieved in Europe with the Schengen visa. So are there other alternatives that would help migration within Africa for economic reasons, but don't require something as big as a common passport? Um, thank you. Uh, within Africa, I've already said that people are, are moving because uh, I'm, a, I'm in the East Africa, I'm, a, I'm Ugandan, I hold a Ugandan passport, and I'm able to actually travel uh, to five East African countries without requiring me a visa. I came here, I didn't pay any visa fee. Uh, but also, Uganda is part of COMESA. I'm able to go to Zambia, to Zimbabwe. To, so I have so many countries. So it's not as bad as we want, uh, but we, we still have a long way to go. It's just that my uh, moving between economic blocks becomes a problem. Uh, I have to wait so many days to get a, a, a visa to South Africa. I have to wait uh, if I have to go to Nigeria. It's a nightmare, you know. So, so uh, it's it, uh, we have to see how can at the economic blocks because they are working so well. ECOWAS, so many countries, people can be able to move within their region. So we have. I, I think it's important that the major economic blocks sit down and uh, figure out before we even think at the uh, African level that how can we harmonize uh, these uh, these rules because it has worked for those economic blocks and nothing uh, and we have seen a lot of uh, trade and a lot of movement of people and better understanding of each other because what we are seeing right now like in Zambia in um, in South Africa a lot of xenophobia like you talked about I think xenophobia is about uh, the fear of uh, what you don't know and uh, also misguided fear that the person coming in is going to take your job and a lot of times it's not um it's not the case uh, so we, we are a continent with a very young population and we have to plan for it better uh, otherwise uh, if we are going to to lie to our communities that we are going to stop maybe rwandans from coming in and and that will help you develop it will not help you develop we must tell them that we have to plan better for them and not be afraid of people who are different from us so i think uh, i think that uh, just as you see and and it's not a specific issue uh, to, to africa we have seen a lot of rising xenophobia in europe uh, anti migrant sentiments and uh, i mean uh, we have seen that at the top level in American politics uh, right now in the presidential elections. So it's not only um, uh, uh, specific to Africa. What we are missing, of course, here, uh, uh, what we are, uh, the, the good thing is that we don't have political leaders blaming migrants in, in Africa generally on record to try and say they have come and they have taken your jobs. Uh, we, we, uh, we don't see, rather, we don't see good leadership people coming out to stick out for migrants, but at the same time, we don't see negativity uh, towards migrants coming in from that top level. So it, we are still, uh, I think, in a way safer if you see analysis from other parts of the world. Do you think xenophobia is on the rise or, or did the attacks in South Africa last year focus attention and create a watershed? Um, I don't think... Uh, whether it's on the rise or not, I think as more people move and uh, into new ter territories, there is a, um, a chance that misunderstandings will arise, but uh, whether it, uh, the xenophobia will increase is uh, dependent on how policy makers and politicians facilitate a conversation about migration and, and movements within the continent. If your politicians are telling you that this person, uh, in the bid to get elected, uh, they're trying to tell you that someone from Uganda, they're in South Africa, it's the reason you're unemployed, then that is cheap and it is, uh, uh, then it will lead the society more radicalized but not find a solution. And as we can see, it's a very, uh, we are in a very mobile, um, you know, century. Many people are on the move looking for, because also of information, uh, is this flow of information, a Ugandan is able to know where a, an opportunity around the world is than before. And, and that's why. And also we focus too much uh, on, on Africans leaving uh, without looking at actually we have a lot of people coming to Africa uh, from the north. It's not about south-north. It's also north-south. We saw a lot of Portuguese 
going into Mozambique and Angola, taking up jobs because of the economic crisis uh, that hit uh, their country. So it's not just uh, uh, Africans leaving. It's, uh, we have to understand it as a mob uh, human mobility at the, at the highest right now because of different factors. And of course, uh, we, within the continent, we, uh, I just, uh, in the pre previous uh, panel, I was talking to President Kagame that Uganda, at the end of 2015, registered the highest um, refugee host, uh, being uh, hosted in my country in the whole of history. That, that is it. And Uganda has been lauded as, uh, as, a, as having one of the best policies towards refugees. Refugees in my country are free to to get out of settlements and be able to be able to to to, to find a living it's hard it doesn't make it easy but I, in other countries we are seeing kenya moving to close the dab you know we already we know that somalia uh, the somalia conflict is far from over yet you're seeing a neighboring country moving to close the that kind of hostility at that level is not going to solve problems so we have to be able to 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 to, to look at what's happening around around us, it has to do with forced migration. Um, and I think uh, UNHCR last year recorded uh, 59 million people forced uh, uh, to flee their homes. Uh, uh, that's the level of force uh, around the world, you know, the level of forced migration because of conflict, because of, you know, uh, disasters. It, it's really a very complex issue that we should be looking for good solutions and policies rather than rushed, you know, political calculations because terrorism, you know, blame the dub and close it. It does not help. It's a really short term uh, and it's short sighted. I don't think it will uh, uh, resolve any terrorism issues that Kenya is, is facing. Short sighted. It's not, not the only region in the world. Um, do we have any more questions? Okay, gentlemen here, please. Good morning. I'm Andy Lekumalo from Power FM in South Africa. So I'm South African. And the question I wanted to ask and maybe just contribute to the conversation is. You're right, there's no politician who's going to come out and say overtly that, you know, they don't support other foreign nations coming to their country. But in the case of South Africa, and I'm interested in your comment on this one, it's become very difficult to sell the idea of migration to the people on the ground. And in my suspicion, the politicians are responding to that. Um, so it's not popular to differ from the people because those are the same people who may not vote you in power. Mm -hmm. The reality is that many black South Africans do see other Africans coming into South Africa as a threat to their jobs, as a threat to their livelihoods. And I don't think my people are lazy, but I think that the, the, a lot of the fellow Africans that come into South Africa are just a lot more hardworking. They may come from a different circumstance and may see being in the country as a different thing, even when it comes to small business. You drive to downtown Johannesburg, downtown Durban, even Cape Town and Port Elizabeth, and you see a lot of other you know, Africans outside of South Africa coming in and making a living. And those people are seen as people taking away economic opportunities. So the question I have is, how do you educate the man on the street that migration is good for the economy and there is an upside to them when all they see is downside? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, it's a very difficult uh, situation because it's the same government which has not done much for the people who are blaming the migrants, right? So they are not going to say, we failed you, it's not a migrant. So it's a div very difficult conversation. And what you find a lot uh, in our communities is that we have civil society on so many rights and different issues, and we are behind in Africa in finding civil society voices because it's not just the government that will speak. I believe that uh, as civil society, we have a, a duty to educate, to say this is what it is in the absence of government, in the silence of government. Well, there has to be alternatives uh, to how people acquire information on uh, who influences what people get. That's why you find the government is quiet because uh, they are not going to say the truth. The truth will indict them that they are not planning so well for you know, their communities. And uh, of course, it's a difficult uh, history uh, in South Africa that somehow uh, black people in South Africa might not be at the same level maybe with the Ugandans because education uh, opportunities we had, the people there did not have. So it's important to facilitate that kind of conversation. I, I don't think one policy is going to be, you know, the magic bullet. I think it's important to have civil society facilitating uh, community dialogue, you know, about who are, who are the migrants. And many times we isolate migrants and they s remain in their small more communities uh, without any interaction with, um, with, with, uh, with the local communities. So I think the issue is really uh, 
not necessarily the solutions are not only in government. I, I think I believe that we, we have so many uh, issues on data, on uh, how many people are speaking out on migrants' rights. And, uh, and people to know that also you, you, they have opportunities. And also educate people about their own opportunities somewhere else, uh, not to think. Uh, because when you look at freedom of movement right now, I think it's easier for us as Africans to go in different parts of the, of the world than I actually. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the reality is that we have a young population. We have to wa work hard to provide opportunities for. So anything that looks like it's threatening them will be the target. And uh, it's not the solution. Uh, you know. uh, that said, of course, uh, w w the session was about managing migration. We have to manage. Um, uh, we can't allow, of course, uh, disorderly movement and people uh, uh, moving around and you don't know what people are doing in the country. And most countries don't have data system to track down what are people doing, how much are they contributing, to be able to have that kind of uh, you know, uh, enhanced conversation with uh, evidence-based data rather than just feelings of the people. Thank you. So, Rosebud, we're sadly running out of time. It's a great shame because it's a debate which is fascinating to me as well. Look, I don't think, for, as you mentioned before, I don't think we're going to go back to the days where borders are going to disappear. I don't think um, it's realistic that we'll have a fully functioning African Union passport by 2018. So, mm -hmm. we're looking at a situation where migration is going to continue, it's going to possibly rise. Do you think the steps are in place? There are enough best practices, good practices out there to mean that migration will no longer commute to such you know, social instability or do you see this problem getting worse? Um, I think migration is a great opportunity for us, uh, but the danger lies in not really being able to to manage it well. And we have seen uh, we have a an, uh, and with migration there has co have come different uh, issues. We have a lot of human trafficking on this continent, uh, in the name of migration. We we, we have uh, a lot. Of, so migrants' rights. Uh, many countries have signed migrants' rights conventions, but we don't see much you know uh, emphasis on uh, making sure that the communities. Uh, that in different countries are protected. We only rush when there's an attack. We do not actually involve ourselves in a conversation daily. Um, in Uganda, for example, we had a case in 2011 where a Ugandan uh, uh, woman who was part of a group that was trafficked to Iraq uh, sued the government when he, she finally was returned home for not protecting her. So it's about how also with these issues, how much of information do people have? In Uganda, we have so many you know, um, companies recruiting people, young people, to go to the Middle East. And they're working under horrible conditions, they're not told. So we have to have a conversation beyond youth threatening, but also the issues that really um, are underlying migration. So we have seen that a lot of Ugandans now are talking about migrants' rights because uh, Ugandans are facing a hard time in the Middle East. And Uganda had to put a ban I think of uh, exportation of labor to Saudi Arabia because we've had consistent um, uh, human rights violations. So uh, uh, we are having that conversation with the Middle East. We need to have that conversation among us, each other about migration and the underlying um, uh, issues that are, uh, that are affecting us. But, but as I said, we are in a, in a really highly mobile society. Uh, I was born in a, in a small village in Uganda, which is not far from Rwanda, by the way. So I'm closer at home than in Kampala. So, but I came from there at the age of 18, I went to university in Kampala. Already we're migrating within our own communities. By the time you're, you're 30, you have gone through different societies within your country. So it's about understanding migration, n not as you have to leave your country in order to migrate. Even in my country, Uganda, we already have tensions because communities, uh, when you look at the map of Uganda, each community had its own area where they were. But now communities are moving, lands, uh, lands are being sold. So we have so many tensions even within with internal migration. So we have to expand the conversation uh, and know that it's not going to stop. And looking at ad urbanization, you know, uh, urban populations in the world are, are pro uh, predicted to be, to be double by 2060. So we are moving into cities. If you realize that, uh, if you go home, you realize that the, my parents live in the rural area, I live in the city, I see them once in a while. And that's the trend. And, the, and as people moving into the city, they also move outside their borders. So we are not going to easily stop this. We just have to understand it and explain it to ourselves and find solutions. It's not, it's, but it's not easy. Thank you. Rosabel, we're all migrants, let's face it. Thanks so much. That's fascinating. I, I, I especially like your ending point on greater conversation between countries on migrants' rights is a good way forward. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for joining us here in the room and live online at weforum.org.
the session is now finished. Thank you.